Okay, now let's move to uh, biodiversity and evolution. Okay, so what is biodiversity and why is it important? Okay, so when you say biodiversity, it is actually found in genes and species and ecosystems and ecosystem processes. And it is actually vital to sustain the life on Earth. So biodiversity is a crucial part of the Earth's and natural capital. Okay, when you say biodiversity, is the variety of the Earth species, the genes, they contain the ecosystems in which they live, and the ecosystem processes such as energy, uh, flow, and nutrient cycle that sustains all life, okay? And there are actually uh, four interacting components in the biodiversity. Okay, so we have the species diversity, uh, genetic diversity, uh, ecosystem diversity, and the functional diversity. Okay, so as what is already been portrayed here in this figure. So first is we have the species diversity. So the species diversity refers to the number and the variety of the species present in a biological uh, community and it's the most obvious component of uh, biodiversity. Okay, so scientists think that ecosystem which with high levels of species diversity tend to be more uh, stable okay and another important component is uh, what we call the genetic diversity so when you say genetic diversity it's the variety of genes found in a population or in species which enables the earth species to survive and adapt to dramatic environmental uh, changes okay so what is the difference between these two is, is that when we say species diversity, it's actually the number of the variety of the species that are actually present in the biological community, okay? And scientists think that if there are a lot of uh, species diversity on a specific environment, then that environment is stable, okay? And also, when you say genetic diversity, it's actually the variety of genes found in a population or in a species which enable the Earth's species to survive and adapt to dramatic environmental uh, changes. Another interacting component, but before that, is that, so we can see here in this figure, it's about uh, genetic diversity, okay? So this is actually uh, Caribbean snakes, okay? So as you can see that there are a lot of genes that are actually uh, being reflected here on the Caribbean snails, okay? So genetic diversity can also include other variations such as the slight differences in their chemical makeup, sensitivity sensitivity to various chemicals, and also their behavior, okay? So different genes here have different uh, adaptation or different ability to survive uh, in a dramatic change in the environment. And also, as you can see, that there are different uh, colors and also there are different, uh, but they are the same on the same uh, species, but they are different uh, genes, okay? So, because they have different uh, types of uh, shell, okay? So, they, uh, they belong to the same uh, species of Caribbean, okay? But actually, they have a different uh, types of genes, okay? And some of these would have, uh, some of these would have the ability to survive in the dramatic uh, environmental changes, okay? So, that is what we call the variety of genes, so another uh, interacting component is what we call the uh, ecosystem diversity. So when you say ecosystem diversity, it's the Earth's variety of deserts, uh, grasslands, uh, forests, mountains, oceans, lakes, rivers, and wetlands. And it is another, and biologists have classified it as uh, uh, terrestrial okay, uh, ecosystem into biomes. Okay, so when you say biomes, these are large regions such as forests, uh, deserts, deserts, and grasslands with distinct climates and certain species uh, typically occurring within them. Okay, so we have also four, uh, we have here uh, different major biomes, okay, that are found in the ecosystem, okay. So we have these different uh, biomes here, you have the uh, coastal caparal and scrub, coniferous forest, we have desert, uh, coniferous for, uh, forest, prairie grassland, and deciduous forest. Okay, so these are different biomes that are uh, found. Okay, 
so in the United States. And another important component of biodiversity is uh, what we call the functional diversity. Okay, so the variety, the functional diversity is the variety of processes such as uh, energy flow and matter cycling that occur within ecosystem as species interact with one another in food chains and also in food webs. Okay, so the Earth's biodiversity is a vital part of the natural capital on which we depend. With the help of technology, we use the Earth's biodiversity as a source of food, medicine, uh, building materials, and also in energy. Biodiversity also provides critical ecosystem services such as air, water purification, or renewal of topsoil, decomposition of places, and pollination. In addition, the Earth's variety of species and ecosystem serve as a raw materials for the evolution of new species and ecosystem services in response to changing environmental conditions. We owe much of what we know about biodiversity to research to researchers such as such as uh, Edward O. Uh, Wilson. Okay, so that's it, and that's the uh, interacting components in the uh, biodiversity. Okay, so each species in the ecosystem has a vital or specific roles. Okay, so what roles do species play in an ecosystem? So each species plays a specific uh, ecological role and we will also discuss this as what we call the uh, ecological niche, okay? So any given species may play one or more four important roles. Uh, they can be native, non-native, indicator, or a keystone in a particular ecosystem. So what are all these uh, roles that the species can have in an ecosystem? So an important uh, principle of ecology is that the species it has a specific role to play in an ecosystem and where it is found. And that is what we call the uh, ecological niche or niche. Okay, So it is a species way of life in a community and it includes everything that affects its survival and reproduction such as how much water and sunlight it needs, how much space it requires and what it feeds on and what it feeds on it and the temperatures and the other conditions that it can uh, tolerate, okay? A species and niche can, should not be confused with its habitat, okay? Which is the place or a type of ecosystem in which it lives. So that is a habitat, a type or a place uh, or a type of ecosystem which it lives, okay? But when you say ecological niche or niche, it's actually uh, the lifestyle of the species, okay? So how it is reproduced, how is this survive, how it, uh, how much water that it needs, okay, how much space that it requires, or what temperature that it could survive, or what conditions that it can tolerate, okay. So that's what we call ecological niche, okay. Scientists use the niche of species to classify them as a generalist or specialist, okay. So when I say generalist species, this they can. Uh, like for example, uh, raccoons, uh, uh, they have actually broad niche. Okay, when we say a uh, general species, uh, they can live in many different places. Okay, they eat a variety of foods and often tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions. So other general species are like flies, okay, cockroaches, rats. So they can live in many different places. A white-tailed deer. And also humans can also be considered as a generalist species because we can also live on different uh, places, okay? And we often can tolerate a wide range of environmental condition. And of course, we can, can, can eat a variety of uh, foods. In contrast, when we say specialist species, that uh, they may be able to live in only one type of habitat and use only one or more a few types of food or tolerate a narrow range of environmental conditions. Example are your giant panda. Okay, so giant panda and also some example that shorebirds are specialized to feed on crustaceans, uh, insects or insects or other organisms found on sandy beaches and other adjoining coastal wetlands. Okay, so so here, so we have here the figure that shows the ecological niche as either a specialized or general species, okay? So a wide uh, niche, ecological niche is a generalist species, okay? Like for example, here is a raccoon, okay? 
which it can live in a different places and have a, a variety of foods that it can feed on and also have a wide range of uh, environmental adaptations okay uh, unlike the specialist species like uh, white or giant panda okay which has a narrow ecological niche okay because it can only uh, live on one type of habitat okay and of course there are a few types of food that it can only eat okay so because of their narrow niche specialists are more prone to extinction okay so when environmental conditions change okay so because uh, uh generalist uh, species could also be an endemic species okay that that means they can only live on one certain area or one uh, habitat okay so they can be prone to what we call extension and we we will discuss that later on so when when there are uh, environmental changes uh, that will occur okay so for example is you have the china's giant panda um, which is, high, is highly endangered because of the combination of habitat loss a uh, low birth rate and also a specialist diet consisting mostly of bamboo so so is it is it better to be a generalist or a specialist it actually depends okay when environmental conditions are fairly constant as in tropical rainforest specialists have an advantage because they have fewer competitors but under rapidly changing environmental conditions the more adaptable generalist usually is better off okay so under certain uh, environmental conditions uh, you could say that general species has a more is a more favored one okay unlike the uh, specialist species okay but if the condition is just stable and specialists would have an advantage okay since if there there will be no competitors that will have to compete with their uh, foods okay so therefore a specialist could have an advantage in a tropical forest where this is, it is stable one okay unlike uh, if there is an environmental conditions or changes then therefore generalists would have a more advantage than this special species so this is actually the figures that uh, shows the uh, various bird species that are actually found in the uh, that are actually found in the coastal uh, wetlands okay so in coastal wetlands okay so these are actually uh, shorebirds okay so as what i have said uh, shorebirds are also a uh, specialized species okay so shorebirds are they feed on crustacean insects and other organisms found on the sandy beaches and their adjoining coastal uh, wetlands okay so they are they are also examples of the specialist species so species can play four major roles within an ecosystem so niche can be classified further in terms of specific roles and that certain species play within ecosystem so ecologists describe them as you have a number one is a native species okay so when you say native species are those species that normally live and thrive in a particular ecosystem so other species that migrate into or deliberately or accidentally introduce into an ecosystem are called the non-native uh, species okay so when we say native they are normally uh, live on that particular ecosystem but if there is a species that migrate into that kind of uh, ecosystem then that is what we call a non-native species non-native species can also be referred to as an invasive aliens or an exotic uh, species okay people think of non-native species as threatening in fact, most uh, domesticated species, including many food crops, flowers, chickens, cattle, and fish, benefit people in the areas where they were introduced. However, some native species can compete with and reduce an eco ecosystem's native species, causing unintended and unexpected uh, consequences. Okay, so people think of uh, native species as threatening. And because they can compete with other uh, native species and also uh, they can uh, reduce the, the the ecosystems of the native species okay causing uh, unintended and unexpected uh, consequences okay so another type of roles 
are specific roles of a uh, species that plays uh, in an ecosystem is what we call the indicator species. Okay? So indicator species serves as a biological smoke alarms. Why? Uh, species that provide, because they are species that provide early warnings of environmental change in a community or an ecosystem. Okay? Like for example, for, uh, for amphibians, so our amphibians are also, they are classified as indicator species, okay? Because they, they, they have this uh, mechanism on their, on their body, okay? Which can cause, uh, uh, which can, which can change if there is also an environmental changes, okay? So it serves them as a warning uh, that this kind or that this place or that this environment is actually changing, so, when amphibians are there, like for example, uh, uh, frogs, okay? So, they have this uh, in, uh, this change in their body or in their, in their, in their structures or in their, in their mechanisms, okay? Or in their behavior if there is a change on the environment, okay? Some of the amphibians are what we call the indicator uh, species, okay? So... So one of the reasons for this is that a 2005 study found an apparent correlation between climate change caused by atmospheric warming and the extinction of about two-thirds of the 110 known species of hardly clean frogs in tropical forests of Central uh, South America. Okay, So the decline of the amphibian populations likely results from a number of factors and scientists have found out uh, to several fronts to explore some of the possible uh, cause causes okay so so that's it so when there is a atmosphere uh, when there is an uh, climate change during at that time okay they had been they correlate the the population of the amphibians versus the the climate change that is that can cause an atmospheric warning uh, okay so and they found out that that 110 known species of the harlequin frogs has been extinct when there is a uh, climate change that is actually happening at that uh, ecosystem, okay? So, therefore, her, uh, amphibians can be considered as an indicator species because they serve as biological smoke alarms. Another uh, roles or specific roles of an species is what we call the ketone species, okay? Ketone species play critical roles in their ecosystem because they are species whose roles have a large effect on types of and abundance of other species in an ecosystem. Okay, many of these species occur in small and dwindling uh, numbers. So some key keystone species are more vulnerable to extinction than other species are. Ketone species species can play uh, several critical roles in helping to sustain ecosystem. And one such role is the pollination of flowering plant species, species by butterflies, honeybees, hummingbirds, bats, and other species. In addition, top predator keystone species feed on and help to regulate and populations of other species. Examples are wolves, leopards, lions, and American alligator, and some shark species. So the loss of ketone species can lead to a population crashes and extinction of other uh, species in a community that depends on them for certain ecosystem services. This is why it is important uh, for scientists to identify ketone species and for us to protect them. Okay, so those are the four major roles that a species can, can play uh, in an ecosystem. Okay? <music>